got another speaker coming on though. Where is, let's see, Inez, Inez, calling Inez to the screen. Where are you at? There you are. What's happening, Inez? Hello, hello. Uh, all good. <laughs> great to have you here. I am so excited. So now we went from these 30 minute talks and now we're going to go lightning style and we're going to be going 10 minute talks. And so if anyone has questions in the next 30 minutes over the next three talks, please hit them in Slack or in the chat because the speakers will be answering them there. Inez, I think you need to share your screen. I don't see it. Uh, you might need to share it again. And then I'll give yep. you the 10 minutes. I'll be back in 10 minutes and let you go. Uh, of course, I am a huge fan of what you are doing at Number Station, and I'm so excited for this talk. So I'll let you go right now. Take over. Awesome. And thank you so much for having me, Demetrius. Appreciate. Um, all right. So today I'm going to talk about uh, some of our work on leveraging foundation models uh, in the modern data stack. Uh, and most people here uh, know about generative AI. Uh, before I dive in, I just wanted to do a very quick recap of what foundation models are and why they're so exciting. So at a high level, foundation models are very large neural networks that are trained on massive amounts of unlabeled data, like text or images uh, from the internet. And the idea is to use a technique called uh, self-supervised learning to train the model. So for instance, an important category of models are uh, autoregressive language models, which are trained to predict the next word in a sentence given the previous words. And this idea has been around uh, for a long time in NLP, but what makes uh, foundation models really unique is their scale. Um, and with this increase in scale, uh, model size and data volumes, uh, we started seeing some very exciting new model capabilities. So what are these model uh, capabilities, which we call emergent capabilities? Well, because these foundation models are trained on so much data, they can generalize uh, to many downstream tasks. Uh, via a capability called in-context learning. And the idea is to take any task uh, and cast it as a generation task by crafting a prompt and then use the foundation model to perform the task by completing the prompt, which is what the model is originally trained for. And I can then reuse the prompt on many more input examples, or I can craft many other prompts for uh, different tasks. But the key here is that the same underlying model remains. All right, so we, we clearly see, and everyone here in this workshop knows that there's a revolution happening in this space, and there's a huge paradigm shift compared to traditional AI uh, with foundation models. And it means that pretty much anyone, not just AI experts, can rapidly prototype ideas and build AI applications with this technology. So what we're going to focus on today uh, is application specifically to the modern data stack. And you may have heard this term, uh, but essentially used to describe all the a set of tools to process, store, and analyze data. And starting from where the data originates, which is typically apps like Salesforce or HubSpot, the data gets extracted and loaded in data warehouses like Snowflake. It can then be uh, transformed and modeled using tools like DBT. And ultimately, once the data is clean and prepared, it can be visualized with tools like Tableau uh, or Power BI. And even if these tools are amazing, they've drastically improved things like uh, scalability and knowledge sharing in organizations, uh, there's still a huge uh, uh, problem, which is that there's a lot of manual work uh, to do throughout this process. Uh, so the good news is that it's possible to automate a lot of this work with AI and even more so uh, with foundation models. And that's exactly what we do at Number Station. Essentially, we're bringing this uh, foundation model technology into the modern data stack to accelerate time to insights. So now let's talk about how that works in practice. And I'll start with a simple example that you probably have seen before, which is generating SQL code. Uh, so in modern organizations, anytime a business user needs to answer a business question, they have to send a request to their uh, data engineering team. And these ad hoc requests uh, usually require multiple iterations and can take a long time to fulfill. So with these foundation models, a lot of this back and forth uh, can be avoided by using the model to generate the SQL queries from natural language requests. And this works amazingly well for simple queries, but there are some caveats uh, to use this for more complex queries, especially for 
um, complex query when there's some domain specific knowledge uh, that the models, the large pre-trained model may not uh, capture. So for instance, if there's multiple date columns in my table, which one am I supposed to use? That's not something that the models know out of the box. And I'll touch on this point uh, later in this talk. Uh, another exciting application is data cleaning uh, to fix things like typos or missing values. And typically the way to address this problem is to create a bunch of uh, SQL rules. So this works well overall, but it's a very long process uh, uh, to derive all the cleaning logic. And many times the rules break uh, because of some edge case that was not captured during the rules development process. So with foundation models, there's an exciting alternative uh, to this rule development process, which is to use the model itself uh, to do the correction. And the idea is to create a prompt with a few examples and then reuse this prompt over all the data records to clean the data, which is what is shown in, in this figure. Uh, and this is obviously very exciting because the model can derive the patterns uh, automatically from the in-context examples that we provide. But there are some caveats to this approach as well, especially issues around uh, scalability, uh, which I'll discuss later in this talk. And another exciting application is data linkage. So the goal here is to find links between different sources of data that may not have a common identifier, say like my Salesforce data and my HubSpot data, I wanna link my customers, there's no uh, ID to create a join on. And similar to data cleaning, engineers need to spend long iteration cycles crafting rules and sometimes these rules can be brittle uh, and break in production. So with foundation models, we can create prompt uh, for the specific data linkage task and alleviate some of these issues. The idea is to feed uh, both records to the model and then ask it, are these two things the same in natural language? And in general, we find that both for this problem and the cleaning problem, the best solution is to compose rules with the foundation model. So if there's some very basic rule that can solve 80% of the problem, we should use it. But then for these last mile examples that are more complex, we can call uh, the foundation model. All right, so now that we've shown some of the possibilities for using foundation models uh, in the data stack, and there's many more, I just, I just uh, had to scope it for this lightning talk. Uh, I want to share a few caveats as well as solutions that uh, we've developed throughout our research at Number Station in collaboration with the Stanford AI Lab. So the first caveat, which we touched on uh, briefly, is the scale. Uh, foundation models are extremely large models, and depending on the application and how we use them, they can be very expensive and slow. And if I'm using a foundation model with a human in the loop for things like uh, SQL Copilot, then the scale is not so much an issue. We care more about latency in these cases. But for other data applications where I need to use the model itself to make the predictions on, let's say, an entire database that has millions or billions of rows, this is just impossible. And it's gonna be extremely expensive, extremely slow compared to using a rule-based solution. So how can we address this? Uh, there's many possible solutions and one of them is model distillation. So essentially here, the idea is to take the big model for prototyping and then use that big model to teach a smaller model to do the task. And this actually works really well uh, with good prototypes and good fine tuning. And we can easily bridge the gap between these large and smaller distilled models. Uh, there are also other solutions to address the scale issue, which I linked in this slide, one of them being uh, as I mentioned, to only use the foundation models only when we really need to. So if the task is simple enough that it can be solved with a rule, we don't need to use the model itself to solve the task. We can instead use the model to derive the rules based on the data, which is always better than uh, handcrafting rules. Uh, all right, so another important challenge here is, um, as everyone knows, prompt brittleness. So for instance, uh, if we format a prompt differently, it will predict two different responses in this cleaning task. Uh, and the demonstrations that are used in the prompt are also really important. So in this example on the right, we ran an experiment and we saw that picking uh, manual demonstrations versus random demonstrations had a huge performance gap. Uh, and this can be particularly problematic for data applications where users uh, are used to deterministic outputs, which is the case uh, in the modern data stack. Uh, they're not comfortable with potential errors and brittleness, even if that can save them uh, a lot of hours of manual work. 
So how can we solve this? Um, there's a few methods, again, to, to approach this problem. One of them is a method that we proposed uh, in the AMA paper, uh, which is linked here. And the high level idea is to apply multiple prompts to the input and then aggregate the predictions to get the final result. Uh, this worked quite well. We noticed some good improvements compared to the traditional prompting method. Um, and there are, of course, other solutions to address this prompt brittleness issue, uh, such as decomposing the prompts uh, with chains, as well as being smart about how we sample uh, demonstrations. And the last caveat I wanted to touch on here is the lack of domain-specific knowledge. So foundation models are trained on public data, and they lack some knowledge that is sometimes uh, crucial to solving enterprise data tasks. So for instance, if I'm asking a foundation model to generate a query uh, to compute the number of active customers in my database, there might not be a perfect is active column. Uh, and then what I need to do is rely on some organizational knowledge that defines what an active customer is to generate uh, that query properly. And so to approach this uh, domain knowledge problem, there are two types uh, of solutions, inference time and training time. So for training time, the idea is to leverage the untapped knowledge that is stored uh, in organizations' documents, logs, uh, metadata. And what we can do is continually pre-train open source models on this data to make them aware uh, of this domain knowledge. Uh, and we have some work on this, which I, I linked as well on this slide. Uh, another solution is to bring the knowledge at inference time by augmenting the foundation model with some external memory that can be either accessed through a knowledge graph, a semantic layer, or a search index over the, the internal documents. So that's pretty much it for, for this talk. I'm sorry, I know it was rushed. I tried to condense everything in, in 10 minutes. Uh, I wanted to thank a few of my collaborators from Stanford and Number Station. And if you're interested about these applications, feel free to reach out to me, uh, check out the blog, send out an email. Uh, I'd be happy to discuss more. So good. I love it, Inez. Thank you so much. That was awesome. So two things. Uh, if anyone has a question, throw it into the chat or into Slack. Inez, I think, is in both of them. I'm super excited about what you're doing at Number Station. And I believe that you're you're working out of the factory offices or you stop by there every once in a while because I'm a yeah uh, a good part of our team is there so all right now that i've got you on screen right here i'm gonna <laughs> now i can catch you i'm gonna be visiting diego who you're working with in at the end of the month in san francisco and I want to stop by the factory office and hang out. And maybe we can record a podcast or something and you can go deeper into this. Does that sound good? Yeah, anytime. Sounds great. And thank you for inviting me again. Awesome. Well, I am glad we got that. I'll reach out to you on uh, the good old email or Slack and we'll make it happen. And now we'll keep it cruising. So thanks again, Inez. <laughs>